quite a strange rallying call. Even after five years of working in this movement, I still can't believe we need a movement to get our children outside. That's me 35 years ago. Am I there yet? <laughs> ah, where am I? That's me 35 years ago. I grew up in Clintonville with four big brothers and a big sister, and back then I and every child played outside every day, even in winter. In summer, we'd play outside all day, then play at night, at night games, sleep in tents in the backyard. Childhood was filled with free time, freedom, and daily adventure. Here's a map of my neighborhood. The green line maps where I played. It spanned one square mile. With no adults in sight, we rode bikes, climbed trees, played a lot of football, got in fights with each other, snuck into the neighborhood pool at night, got into more fights with each other, and had the time of our lives. Here's childhood today. Our youth are spending seven and a half hours a day outside of school, plugged into their electronics. Not surprisingly, obesity has quadrupled since I was a child. And our youth have a myriad of other ailments from vitamin D deficiency to myopia, underdeveloped muscles, to increased depression, stress, and much more. Here's a map of where a child growing up in my house would play today in that little blue circle Studies show children are not allowed to play more than 100 feet beyond their back doors, and we supervise them 24-7. Don't run too fast. Don't climb too high. Their play is either structured and adult-led or sedentary and indoors. I never fully understood FDR's famous phrase, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Now I know exactly what he meant, how destructive fear can be. In our efforts to create a risk-free world for our children, we are, ironically, making them sick and weak and more susceptible to risk. But there's something else equally tragic. Our children, our students, they're missing out on arguably the most amazing classroom, playground, science lab. That's the natural world. So many of our artists and our inventors have been inspired by nature. Thoreau, O'Keeffe, Einstein, they must surely be weeping for our children. We weep with them, and it's why we've joined the movement. Author Richard Louvre sparked the LNCI movement in 2005 with his best-selling book, Last Child in the Woods, Saving Our Children from Nature Deficit Disorder. He got so many emails from people all around the world. He knew he had struck a nerve, and in 2006, he called for a movement to begin. Many heeded the call. In just five short years, the movement has grown to include 101 campaigns in ne nearly every state in the U.S. It's inspired governors to hold summits, legislators to write legislation, and has reached all the way to the top, inspiring Michelle Obama's Let's Get Outside campaign and President Obama's Great Outdoors Initiative. Center Ohio joined the movement in 2007, excuse me, with the formation of Leave No Child Inside, the Leave No Child Inside Center Ohio Collaborative. In the spirit of true grassroots activism, a hallmark of this movement, Alice and I and a couple friends sent out an invitation. We didn't personally know who we were inviting. We had never held a summit, and at the onset, we didn't have any money. All we knew is that we felt passionately about getting kids back outside. Turns out that a lot of other people felt passionately too. 75 people came to that first summit from 30 organizations. Since then, we've held four subsequent summits, grow to grown to include 70 organizations, more than that now, created the Ohio Children's Outdoor Bill of Rights, worked with state uh, leaders on, the report on Ohio <laughs> the report on Ohio's initiative to reconnect children and nature, and much, much more. In the five years that Alice and I have been doing this, oh, good, I'm there. There isn't one time we felt pushback on this issue. And I think that's because everybody gets it. Democrat, Republican, doctors, parents, teachers. It's so nice to have at least one issue on which, which we can all agree. It's refreshing and it makes the work fun. Of course, it helps to have a really great product or a solution to offer when laying out the sobering reality of this indoor sedentary life. Nature is that solution. Spending time in nature is proven to relieve depression, stress, vitamin D deficiency, Proven to reduce obesity, ADD, ADHD. Proven to improve cognitive functioning, creativity, concentration, and test scores. Just imagine, I can slow down now because my, it's all done. <laughs> Just imagine if I invented a pill or a magic potion 
that could promise all of these results. Venture capitalists would be knocking down my door to invest, and my phone would be ringing off the hook with calls from public, public officials, school superintendents, teachers, doctors, and parents everywhere. But the beauty is, no one has to call anyone for a nature prescription, and no pharmaceutical company will ever own its patent. Nature belongs to all of us, and it's free. And it's waiting right outside our back doors, on our school playgrounds, and at our nearby parks and nature camps, waiting patiently to help make our children happier, healthier, and smarter. Sometimes solutions are simple, but sometimes waking up to them is not. So please, help us spread the message that children need nature and unstructured play every day for their healthy development. Join the Leave No Child Inside movement. Take your own small step or big step for children in nature, and may we continue to work together to leave no child inside. <laughs>